Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to be here today because this conference on rural transformation and urbanization goes straight to the heart of our collective responsibility to end rural poverty and hunger and to bring sustainable development. Rural and urban spaces should not be viewed as distinctly different from each other. Several rural and urban development studies have shown that rural and urban areas are interconnected economically, financially, and socially. The strong interplay between rural and urban areas through various drivers has created an interface critical in the formulation of poverty reduction strategies, particularly in the context of rural-urban disparities. The rural-urban linkage is good for positive de development outcomes in both the rural area and urban settlements. Several evidences show that they offer opportunities for identifying possibility that can be leveraged to stimulate local rural economic activities and local innovative productive systems that involve both rural and urban areas, but in ways that are not harmful to either. Successful rural development stimulates and supports urban development, which is key impetus to rural development, especially when the latter is based on relatively equal access of resources. Connections between urban and rural areas are complex and they are not always beneficial to the poor people. For example, some regional development planning used to create better balance between urban and rural and reduce migration pressures on urban areas has disproportionately benefited large farms and wealthy landowners. Instead of stimulating the economic economies, the goods and services required by the new economic activity stimulated by these policies came from businesses located outside the regional boundaries and new income is not reinvested in the communities. Even many policies that attempt to draw on urban-rural linkages are often unsuccessful because they fail to reflect the true circumstance of the people they are created to help. There are numerous gaps in understanding and improving the effectiveness of planning and policies that affect urban and rural livelihoods and agro-environmental issues. There is also a need for targeted livelihood options for groups with different access to markets that need concerted evidence-based investigations. It's important to see that the linkages are beneficial and not detrimental to, to rural areas. It's therefore important to identify different aspects and processes of urban-rural linkage in the context of each condition and each country to avoid this. Before any intervention, knowledge is needed, research studies are needed. For example, to find out the nature of rural agricultural activity and their impacts onto the rural economy. We need to analyze the dependency of urban-rural economy as a crucial factor for improving the total economy of a country. More is needed to understanding of how changing rural-urban interaction affects the livelihoods of low-income and vulnerable groups in both urban and rural settlements. We need to support the capacity of local institutions and governments to identify the opportunity and constraints of poverty reduction and regional development and to act on them. A dialogue is needed between national and local governments to ensure a better integration between national, macroeconomic and sector-specific policies and local initiatives. Linkages at this level support rural-urban linkages. Policies should be analyzed or op uh, policy options should be analyzed in order to strengthen urban rural linkages and promote the integration between rural and urban areas rather than their separ separateness, thereby reducing both 
rural and urban poverty. Analyzing policies and investment options that will not only promote stronger links between rural and urban area of higher urban and rural growth and poverty. Uh, uh, poverty reduction, but also to reduce the transfer uh, to reduce the transfer costs that subsequently hinder market integration between urban and rural areas. Policy options and institutional designs that enhance smooth rural urban migration and the development of non-farm activities. Reduction of institutional and policy barriers that hinder interlinkages between rural and urban product markets, particularly of high value commodities. These are knowledges which are, which are needed and which are very specific in specific contexts. And these knowledge gaps can be filled either by bringing in researchers and knowledge from outside, or you can develop local capacity to do that. Important as outside research and outside knowledge is, Sustainable development requires a critical mass of local scientific capacity to be developed so that the knowledge generated can be continued and adapted to local and changing conditions. Ladies and gentlemen, one such organization which is trying to do that is the International Foundation for Science, which was established in the early 1970s to address the staffing conditions under which younger faculty members in the University of Developing Country were attempting to do research. Since then, IFS have awarded over 8,000 small grants into over 105 countries and built capability with tens of thousands of people, of young people developing in the, uh, in the, in, in the world researchers. More than four decades after its inception, the objective of the International Foundation for Science remains at the heart of the world's effort toward universal, integrated, and transformational development. These are en encompassed, as we know, in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, and which are agreed by world nations in September. Science, technology, and innovation are essential for eradicating poverty and achieving health and well-being in line with the aspirations contained in the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda and leave no one behind. Therefore, in May 2017, a multi-stockholder United Nations Forum on Science, Technology and Innovation on Sustainable Development Goal was held in New York, as everybody knows maybe, to achieving options for to, to, yeah, sorry. Yeah, for, uh, for achieving, sorry for that, for achieving options for enhanced poverty eradication, the implication of new agricultural technologies, ensuring healthy lives and promoting well-being, addressing technological needs and gaps, and cooperation priorities and capacity building plans. The key conclusions of this high-level forum included understanding that science is critical to the agricultural system and it's, funda it's fundamental to eradicating hunger and increasing food security. Ensuring that research and development are targeted at national priorities. The belief that strengthening collaborative linkages can promote science, technology, and innovation in agriculture and food systems agreeing that the greater, the greater investment is needed in research and human capacity. Developing local research capacities to help in identifying unaddressed needs and to develop simple and affordable solutions sensitive to the local context. Science, technology and innovation processes should, should support hands-on learning and other practical educational experiences to inspire interest among future sciences, technology, and innovation practitioners with capability building effort focused on the youth. Each of these conclusions resonate with the objectives and the role that the International Foundation for Science 
is doing. It's more crucial now then, than ever before that IFS, but also many other research organizations play a role in making grants and building the capability of developing country scientists to embark on research career. Because the scientists of tomorrow must contribute to securing affordable food, water, and energy for increasing populations, where their scope of action is constrained by the urgent challenge of environmental sustainability. We had a global conversation among the FS stakeholders lasting for four months and engaged around 4,400 people in different ways to help us to provide the opportunity to listen and reflect before setting our 10-year uh, strategy. And our revised mission and the new program structure reflects today's changing circumstances and opportunity, especially the role that science plays in society and the ways in which science and development landscapes are navigated and linked. Through this strategy, IFS aims to support excellent individual and collaborative research to build capability of early career scientists in the developing world and to contribute innovation to the sustainable management of biological water and energy resources. In particular, we seek to enable young scientists to contribute to a global research community that is reducing poverty and supporting sustainable development. Our primary focus is the promotion of excellent science through early career research grants and capability enhancing support to researchers in developing countries. However, the interlinked developmental challenge that face humanity increasingly requires scientists to work with each other as well as other professional and specialists. Therefore, in our new strategy, working together, is through the phased introduction of a collaborative research approach, also providing support for collaborative research teams, some of which are interdisciplinary, to combine researchers' strengths, expertise, and experience to address larger topics of research issues where, one than, where, where more than one discipline is required. A major change in our agenda is not only to aspire to strengthen the capability of those embar embarking on research career in the developing world, but also to link young scientists to those who can support their actions to bring about change in terms of their values and objectives within the scope described for IFS research areas. In other words, we try to promote the individual agency of men and women scientists early in their career in developing countries so that they can put their research results into use. In conclusion, let me say that empowering and investing in young women and men researchers is an essential step to rural transformation linked to proper inclusive growth and urban dynamics. There is a massive potential and also a pressing need to do more. I urge you to believe that when individuals are at their personal best, they model the way, they inspire a shared vision, and they challenge the process. At the same time, they enable others to act and encourage the hurt. I ask us all to start incorporating, supporting young researchers in developing countries today. And if you do, I know you will be creating more scientific leaders throughout the developing world who will solve our global challenges. Ladies and gentlemen, all of us here today share a common vision of a world without hunger and an achievement of the SDG of 2050. I am convinced that by working together, we can and we shall succeed. Thanks a lot for your attention.